there is now. And welcome to the SVK Crypto Podcast. 15 minutes of crypto value. My name's Charles Story. I'll be your host for the next 15 minutes. We're coming live from the city of London, so let's get down to business. The date today is the 18th for the 10th, 2017. We currently have Bitcoin trading at $5,151.44. That's down 9% in the last 24 hours. We currently have Ethereum trading at $290.64, down 9.87% in the last 24 hours. Ripple, uh, that's down at uh, 21 cents. And the last 24 hours, that's trading downwards of 13.66%. Litecoin, that's currently trading at $53.89. That's down 11.89%. And Dash, over at $280.05. And that's down about 6.85% in the last 24 hours. Uh, it's been a bit of a bloodbath. But as we know, um, having followed the crypto market, this is what happens. It, it goes up and we see we see days where we're up 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. And we also have a few down days. So we, we believe in the trajectory of where this is going and the, and the longevity. So we're not worried at all. I know there's been a lot of negative comments, negative stories. I'm not going to mention the sources, CNBC, Bloomberg, but that's just who they are, right? They're, they're not part of, they're not one of us. They're not one of the supporters who are looking at the longevity of this. Um, on a more positive note, I want to say a big thanks to everyone who's followed us on Twitter in the last 24 hours. A big thanks to everyone who subscribed to us, and um, thank you for the for the emails as well. <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't expect the amount of emails I received, but thank you so much for for emailing in. And other than that, let's get on with the next part of the show. Crypto news flash. Crypto news stories from around the world. First story today is a little bit of a negative one, as we mentioned earlier with the bloodbath what happened to Bitcoin. Um, I mean, it's, it's got a positive tone. It says traders waiting for a pullback in Bitcoin's price to rebuild positions in the world's largest cryptocurrency may have the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission to thank. So basically, the, the, the agency came out and they said virtual tokens used in initial coin offerings can come under the CFTC oversight, a message that, that a market adversity to scrutiny did not take well. Bitcoin fell as much as kind of nine percent, its biggest loss in almost a month, to as low as five thousand one hundred fifty-one dollars. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has already said tokens from some ICOs can be securities under its oversight. There is no, this is a quote from them. There is no inconsistency between the SEC's analysis and the CFTC's determination. So, from two thousand fifteen, that virtual currencies are commodities, said the CFTC. So if, if September's price plunges any guide, losses on the bet that Bitcoin will fall within U.S. regulatory jurisdiction could be short-lived. Bitcoin was quick to shrug off China's move to tighten its grip on trading, extending the eight-fold increase over the past year to a record high of $5,866 on October the 13th. Well, you know, that's, that's a bit of news there. I, I really don't believe that it will fall under their jurisdiction. I feel that with 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 what's going on in the industry at the minute, I think that they'd be um, they'd struggle to to do that. My, that's my personal opinion. But hey, let me know your thoughts, guys, via Twitter, via email. Let's get on to the next story. So the second story today: crypto venture firm Blockchain Capital is raising 150 million dollars for two funds, according to the SEC filings this week. The firm has raised about 85 million dollars combined for the two funds. One of the funds. Blockchain Capital Parallel only accepts contributions in cryptocurrencies, according to a source familiar with the firm. Blockchain Capital has invested in 42 companies in the past three years. Blockchain Capital, one of the venture firms to specialize in Bitcoin and crypto projects, is setting to raise $150 million in two funds, which plans to invest in companies and emerging cryptocurrencies. The firm, based in San Francisco, said in SEC filings on Monday that each fund is raising $75 million. Today, Blockchain Capital has raised $60 million and Blockchain Capital Parallel has raised $25 million. The two funds are identical in how much the money and how much money will be put to work, according to a person familiar with the firm. But in the parallel funds, the, the limited partners will, be, will basically participate by contributing cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum as opposed to fiat currency like dollars and euros, said the source, 
who asked not to be named because the details are confidential. Blockchain Capital was founded in 2013 by brothers Bart and Bradford Stevens, along with Brooke Pierce, chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation. The firm has invested in 42 companies in the past three years, according to its website, and has staked in digital asset exchange Coinbase and Bitcoin wallets Exapo and Arbra. With the new funds, Blockchain Capital will continue to invest in companies that are building on the top of the blockchain digital ledger, and it will keep buying tokens in cryptocurrency projects. Since the start of 2017, there's been an explosion in initial coin offerings, or ICOs, in which the cryptocurrency raises um, by creating by selling their own currencies. About 2.6 billion has been raised through ICOs so far this year, with almost all of that occurring this year. According to Coindesk, the SEC is just starting to an analyze the legality of the token offerings. In a previous fund, blockchain brought tokens tied to crypto projects from Bankor Network, Ripple, Kick, and Zero X, as well as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Unlike traditional venture funds, which typically count on a big check from large institutions, blockchain capital is raising smaller amounts of money from a wide variety of investors, according to filings for the fourth fund. 76 investors have committed a minimum of $100,000. The firm even takes money from investors and startup crowdfunding site AngelList. The next story we're going to go through is to do with the Bitcoin hard fork and is it a taxable income? So less than three months have passed since the Bitcoin cash hard fork and already two more Bitcoin hard forks are looming. In light of what seems to be a recurring event, questions still remain about the tax consequences of cryptocurrency hard forks. Although the IRS provided general or guidance sorry, on cryptocurrencies back in 2014, the service has remained silent on the topic ever since. US taxpayers are on their own to determine the proper tax treatment of cryptocurrency hard forks, among a myriad of other issues, and opinions vary widely. Free money is generally taxable income. The problem with Bitcoin hard fork from a tax perspective is that every Bitcoin holder receives an equivalent amount of the new cryptocurrency for free. Bitcoin message boards and forums are already full of posters excited about the prospect of free money. <laughs> Unfortunately for US taxpayers, the IRS has a long and successful history of treating free money as taxable income. Lottery winnings, game show prizes, and found property all qualify as taxable income in the eyes of the IRS. Even unwanted free money is considered taxable income. And there's a, there's a story there as well um, about a, um, a, a textbook publisher sending free textbooks to a high school principal and that ended up being taxed and it was just like a crazy story. It's very famous. It's called Harvey vs. US Justice. So if, you, if you're interested in that kind of situation, I guess you, you should look it up. There's a little doubt that the IRS has plenty of legal authority to treat the hard fork as taxable income. However, several factors make it difficult for taxpayers to accurately and reliably determine the amount amount of such income so i mean that's, that's a pretty cool story I, I don't think it's taxable personally but let me know your thoughts guys and um tweet me send me an email let's move on to the next one the last story today which is absolutely hilarious um is regarding jameson loop so an engineer for bitcoin jameson loop faced down a horde of police officers with rifles at his home in Durham, North Carolina, after someone sent an anonymous tip regarding a hostage situation at his home. The engineer has been vocal on Twitter about upcoming changes in the protocol. They shut down most of the neighborhood, he said. There were dozens of patrol units, a SWAT team, com mobile command posts, a fire truck, and paramedics, he said. It was a huge waste of public resources. Lop had, be <laughs> had been vocal in the hard fork debate and has worked at Bitcoin for almost three years and been a Bitcoin enthusiast for five years. The 911 caller who forced the police to act um, as a dispatcher basically told the police he was holding a family hostage and gave Lop's address. So this guy Lop, I mean, he's he, he, he was very vocal on Twitter regarding the changes and someone's like found out where he lives and he's called down like the whole unit, he's called down the SWAT team, the the paramedics, the fire truck to come and storm his house. <laughs> I mean, how ridiculous is that? And it, it, this is what he said when they interviewed him. Same old, same old. Bitcoin philosophy and scaling debate arguments never get old. A few of the more extreme cases, I think, I'm some kind. They think I'm some kind of manipulative monster. Said Lop. The attacker never made any reference to my public debate, so it's, it's certainly it's certainly not motivated by them. 
They may simply want to extort me, similar to what has happened to other several prominent Bitcoin folks. Top Twitter tweet of the day. Right, so first I'm going to kick it off to our guy Max Kaiser, and you follow him at Twitter, at Max Kaiser, and he basically asked a question. He said, hashtag Bitcoin hard forks are, and your choices were, evolution, sabotage, neither, both. Now, at evolution, we had 17%, sabotage was 33%, 20% neither, and 30% both. So sabotage kind of just about just about made it through there which i found very interesting i thought i'd bring it back to you guys the second twitter tweet of the day was from joseph young and you can follow him at i am joseph young and he he basically quotes tim draper and the quote is in five years people will laugh when you try to use fiat at starbucks hashtag bitcoin is a better store of value boom we love that keep the good work up guys keep it coming svk's current global crypto view all right, guys, I've been looking at a project or an ICO called the Mercury Protocol. Um, I recommend you guys check it out, get a bit of background on what, on what they do. The Mercury Protocol is a suite of smart contracts that enables a more secure, more private social network to form on the blockchain. Instead of isolating the network in centralized servers by creating a tokenized social ecosystem application, can leverage tokens to incentivize meaningful interactions while users can utilize them to gain access to premium services. So a little bit about them, the hard cap on this one is $24 million. They're looking to sell 60% of the tokens in the in the ICO. Um, the conversion rate, I believe one Ethereum equals 1000 GMT, which is their token symbol. The crowd sale date starts October 25th, so it's coming up. We're in the pre-sale at the minute. Um, the max com- maximum market cap on this is $40 million. The bonus structure, there's there's not a bonus, and it's an ERC20 token, so it's based on the Ethereum blockchain. If you guys want to get involved in this and you, you, you want more information, please feel free to contact us. We're also building a book on this in the pre-ICO stage. That's going to be closing soon. Feel free to get in touch uh, on the on the Twitter or just send me an email. You know, I love getting emails from you guys. That's a wrap. I've got a bounce. I will be in touch tomorrow. Listening to an SVK Crypto Podcast original. Follow us on Twitter at SVK underscore crypto. Email us on CSTory at SVKCrypto.com. Leave us a message on our website www.svkcrypto.com.